Man, the real estate market has been crazy the last two years and it has led to a great debate, Chris. Should I buy my home or should I build my home? Like we know at one point that the cost of building has skyrocketed, has that leveled out. And you know what, I'm gonna give you an update video on that today because guess what's going on in my personal world? I'm here at my mountain home and check it out. I'm in the process of doing this massive addition, which means I'm in the thick of evaluating the costs of, was this a smart move or was this a really dumb decision? One, one. Oh, you caught me. I've been doing a little bit of make believe as if I knew how to literally run this big, crazy machine. Uh, these machines have been running for the last two months, basically digging out for an addition on my home. This is like a 25,000 square foot addition. And um, it's going all the way from all the way over here. And over here, it's got to connect all the way up to the house uh, based on the rules in this gated community. And uh, needless to say that right now in the process of pouring concrete, pouring footings, and when I looked at my two best bids at the contractor for doing the concrete work, the spread, the difference between the two was $160,000. That's just the difference between one guy that was higher than the next guy. And it really does kind of beg this question. Does building really make sense right now? And, and I get it, a lot of people aren't trying to build really large homes, just even a basic home or a half a million dollar home, a $200,000 home. Have building prices adjusted where it really makes sense again to consider building? Well, you're about to find out. So this is the question of the day. Chris, should I build or should I buy? And I'm gonna answer that question for you today if it's a personal decision, like I'm literally in the middle of a personal choice, or is this not about my family? It's actually an investment choice. Is this about acquiring investment properties? What's my opinion on building versus buying? Well, shocker, I've got really big opinions on this. So let's start by talking about what's happened in the pricing of building a home in the last couple of years. According to Redfin, the median home sales price currently is $397,000. That's November, 2022. By the way, that number was about 10, $15,000 higher. So we are seeing at a national level at the last 90 days, a slump in pricing. On the flip side, however, you've got Forbes weighing in and they're reporting that the average cost of building a house is right around $300,000 plus the cost of land. Meaning uh, the land is 100 grand and the cost to build is 300 grand. Well, 300 plus 100 is 400 grand. Chris, those numbers, are those really similar? Well, it depends, is land $200,000 where you live or is it $30,000? When evaluating whether or not to build a home, there's three major factors that we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to talk about the cost of lumber because there's a lot of that in every single one of these homes and we know that we've seen some of the greatest fluctuation in pricing in lumber. We're also gonna be talking about labor and then of course we have to talk about the impact of what your mortgage is gonna look like in terms of interest rates and of course the loan. All right, let's start with lumber. What has happened to the cost of lumber? Like you realize that when you break down the cost of building a home, you have a couple of items on there that represent a lot of the cost and lumber is definitely one of those. And uh, definitely during the pandemic, we saw the price of lumber skyrocket. Peaking at $1,686 in May of 2021, lumber has since gone down to pre-pandemic levels and have stabilized around $430. With prices at less than a third of their pandemic highs, this represents a $25,000 savings for the typical home. Think of how crazy this was for someone that was in the middle of building a home a couple of years ago, a year ago, they were planning on $50,000 in lumber to build their home and it ended up being closer to $200,000. That was $150,000 that they weren't counting on. And what are they supposed to do? Like they've signed the papers, they've committed, they put their down payment, they're like in this game and all of a sudden their mortgage, the cost of their house now is $150,000 higher. Compare that to today where prices now have stabilized and dropped all the way back down to $430. That's like that lumber package returning back to $50,000. Someone out there literally just got in at the wrong timing and financially there's now $150,000 extra dollars that they're going to have to pay over time to get their house paid off. 
This is also a reason why um, often when you go into a, a new build, like a neighborhood where there's track homes and there's a big builder that's come in, that sometimes they require a very small down payment, like five, ten thousand dollars or maybe a five percent down. And you promise that when the home's done being built, that you are gonna buy it at a price. Well, guess what's happened in some situations? Some contracts said, well, you've got to buy it no matter what. And then lumber skyrocketed and people are like, ah, this became lawsuit. I need to walk away. I'm tied into a contract. Other people, they could have walked and a lot of people did. And it meant that those houses went back on the market for someone else to buy. Like what happened to the price of commodities like lumber really messed up the game. The good news is right now, if you're considering building, lumber has come down. Not all other line items have, uh, which is why it's still somewhat expensive to build, but prices overall have definitely stabilized. But Chris, there's got to be other reasons that skyrocketed the price of homes in the last couple of years. And you're right, here's one of them. It's labor shortages. Besides the 250,000 working age people who died from COVID-19, 500,000 additional workers have disappeared from the workforce since the pandemic. The shortage of construction workers has both increased construction costs and extended construction times, and by extension contributed to the higher cost of homes. Like right now, Chris, how long is that addition gonna take? Well, we're being told that it's probably gonna be 18 months to two years. Now, that's a really complicated build that I'm doing out there, and there's a lot of strange novelties and things going into that home. But even normal homes are taking three, six, nine months longer than they normally would. And part of it is, where do we get workers? We have a big problem. Here's kind of the crazy thing, is if you take a look at during the pandemic, all of the workers disappeared and now all of a sudden masks are gone and guess what? We need those laborers again. They've come out of the woodwork and yet we still have these crazy shortages. That is adding to the cost of your home. But the third item, probably the most expensive one that you need to like be thinking hardcore about is the construction loan itself. When giving you a construction loan, banks will use the appraised value of the proposed house in determining the amount that they're willing to lend you. After construction is complete, you'll then roll the construction loan into a mortgage. With the Fed expected to continue to raise rates to combat inflation, you may be forced into a higher rate for your mortgage than expected once construction is finished. This is what has caused so much turmoil for people financially is that rates have nearly doubled from where they were prior to the pandemic because they are trying to basically say, well, we're gonna print money because we think that will solve problems, but then, oh no, we've devalued our dollar, inflation is going up, and right now it's at dangerous levels and we don't wanna go to hyperinflation, so now we're gonna bump up interest rates. And what will that do? That will cause people to rethink some of their financial decisions. It is forcing the market to slow down. As in, we're still missing four million homes. That that should be skyrocketing the price of real estate, something that is still eventually gonna correct and continue happening, which is why, as an investor, I'm buying as much real estate as I can right now. But in the short term, it's producing a big problem for people, these higher interest rates. Literally, someone starts the, the construction loan process and they think that the rate's probably gonna be around, you know, three, four percent. That's what was happening before. Well, the home didn't get built in nine or 10 months like they thought. It got built in like 16, 18 months. And by the time it came time to close, Fed had increased rates and all of a sudden it's like, wait, my mortgage has doubled. I can't afford that. And all of a sudden they walk from the home and this home becomes inventory back on the market. And so we're definitely seeing a reset. By the way, as an investor, do you know how many new homes that I'm buying from desperate builders right now at really, really low cost because of this? If you're on the right side of the fence, there's definitely an opportunity to be part of cleanup detail. Imagine owning new property that serves as really strong rental, and you're thinking, but Chris, what about these interest rates? Someone's gotta pay them, I get it. The person in the home isn't going to, but you're the investor. If you have a mortgage, a loan on these, which I do in most cases, then aren't you paying a really high interest rate? Isn't that squeezing cash flow? Well, I want you to think about this for a second. So what happens when interest rates go up? Mortgages go up, which means if you're an investor and you are a landlord or someone is property managing for you, you're going to have to raise your what? 
you're raising your rents. Think about it, supply and demand. Fewer people now can afford to buy a house. They don't disappear, they now are forced to become renters. And guess what? The rental market has become really hot in terms of increasing rents. And so the market always levels itself. If, if real estate prices go up, rents go up. And even though there's a lag between the two of them, they eventually catch up. So frankly, whether interest rates are at three, four, five percent or seven, eight, nine percent, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to continue building my wealth and there's a system and a strategy for how you do that. And in a moment, I'm gonna talk about how that is. But first, let's get to the conclusion. Should you actually be building right now or just buying a house? So let's summarize and get to the conclusion of this. First of all, the pros is that if you build, you get exactly what you want. You don't have to worry about bidding wars, you eliminate the need for renovations, and new homes initially appreciate faster. But some of the cons, there's stress, right? Things are constantly changing. You can't negotiate pricing. It's like, once you start the process, like for me, I'm like, the cost of whatever I want is going to be the cost of whatever it is. And I don't control the commodities. The builder doesn't do that. This is a global phenomenon that is affecting the ultimate outcome on the price of what I'm choosing to build. There's going to be cost overruns. That means things are gonna cost more than you think, more than likely. And you might have to wait one or two years to move in because it's now taking longer to build these homes and you can't predict the future on mortgage rates. That's the scary one is if the rates keep going up and you're not locked in now, that might mean that your mortgage becomes hundreds of dollars or maybe a thousand or thousands of dollars more than you were actually planning. So that leads us to this point right here. Should I, based on how things have corrected, build or should I just buy? Whether you are actually looking at doing this for your family or it's an investment property, in a moment I'll tell you what I believe for me in my personal financial situation, but let me talk about the key takeaways that if I were you, I'd be considering. The first thing is this, every property you own should be thought of as an investment property. That means even if it's your house, it's your castle, it's your domain, it's still an investment, right? Like it carries those characteristics. It's gonna appreciate over time. It gives you the tax benefits of depreciation. You might move out of it and turn it actually into a rental. You always wanna have that mindset of, how is this helping add and build my assets? Number two, if the loan, the lumber, and the labor all come together and you can manage that, then by all means build. This is definitely holding true for more and more people, especially in a lower price range. But if you don't have a financial reserve, then go the safer route, buy an existing property, especially when it comes to rates. If you are thinking of building, you might be able to lock in your rate now for when you go permanent and the house is done. That's what I have on my house, which means that I'm not worried about 18 months from now where our rate's gonna be. I'm locked in, so I'm good. But if you choose an option where you're not locked in, I think there's way too much risk in that. So my wife and I moved out here a few years ago because we were definitely looking for a slower pace of life. Uh, beautiful gated community, clearly up here in the mountains. We get snow in the winter. It's beautifully warm like California, uh, you know, in the summers. And we do a lot of traveling, right? We take our jet, do a lot of traveling, a lot of speaking engagements, a lot of connecting with people, a lot of travel around the world. And so for my wife and I, we don't like going down into the valley. And we decided, you know what we're gonna do is we're going to build an addition that takes all the activities that we like having in our life, the time that we like spending at the spa, uh, the time that I like spending at the gym, the time that I, I like doing other activities, racquetball, and let's just bring all of that centralized here. Side note, literally I will save a ton of time by bringing those activities here, which is kind of the impetus for the choice. Um, so right over here, it's gotta to connect to the, to the main house, which is beautiful living quarters, it's a wonderful home, but putting in all of these amenities is really about producing a lifestyle so that when we're not on the road traveling or hitting up somewhere in the world, we can spend as much time as home and enjoy that habitat. So right over here, this is probably my wife's favorite creation. Uh, this, is, uh, this is an indoor pool with a retractable floor which means it's a living space and you can't tell there's a pool there. And then it has all of this high tech submergible where it just drops and it will actually have diving depth. Kind of cool. Uh, there's some other cool things that we're definitely putting in here. Uh, but for us, it's really this whole idea of building this definitely comes down to wanting to choose everything to be perfect and just right, just the way we want. And does that come at a financial premium? Yeah, but on the market, did we first look to see if there was anything remotely close to what we wanted? 
And the answer was no, there was nothing, there was no homes for sale that met all of our criteria. So for us, we felt that building was really the only option. Financially, this time of year, where we're at in the marketplace, does this really make the most financial sense? Well, I always tell people, when it comes to your rules of money, finance, and investing, you gotta be smart with your money. You gotta be smart with your investing so that when it comes time to making personal choices, you have the money to do what's best for you and your family. Uh, by the way, this is a 12 car garage add-on uh, because I don't have enough toys in my life. And um, underneath that, I've got a 5,000 square foot gym going in because uh, if you've seen any of my health channels, I'm a little bit of a gym nut, like uh, a little bit more than a hobbyist. Uh, I think I'm obsessed with the game of transformation and I'm playing a game that says, okay, if I'm gonna be 144 years old, then I gotta be in my prime health as long as possible. And so bringing that gym into our home and having it designed just the way we want, mm, it's probably excessive, it's probably too big, it's probably overboard, uh, but hey, two things are certain. If you are buying a house for you and your family, it's hard to know exactly what's gonna happen in the future. But the second thing is that that means that it's even stronger and better from an investment perspective, which is why right now, if I were you, if you had the choice between, well, I really want to lay down roots on a, on, a, on a nice neighborhood or a custom build or a nice house, but it's gonna cost more than I thought it would, I would advise you to strongly reconsider instead focusing on investing right? Grow your capital. A lot of people are trying to keep up with somebody, keep up with the Joneses. And sometimes it means that they're not building the financial future that they want because they're too consumed with having what they want right now. That delay of gratification just doesn't exist anymore for a lot of people. But if you get into the investing game, the way I've played it, it means that in a short period of time, you can literally buy anything that you want because your investments are doing it for you. You're no longer trading your time for money. You have your money at work in real estate working for you. And I'm telling you, I've waited over a decade, 15 years for the market to present these conditions so that we could literally get our hands on the very best buys. That's what's happening right now. Now here's kind of the cool thing. I got a lot of people all over the world that are watching this video, have subscribed and watched a lot of my other videos or they're on my other social platforms. And they know that I can actually partner with you. You might have money sitting in a 401k or an IRA. It could be equity tied up in a home that you're just trying to get your house paid off. And it felt like it was something smart to do, but really that might be in lieu of building a stronger financial future. So if you've got reserves anywhere in retirement accounts or equity, and you feel like, man, maybe I should become an investor. Maybe I should buy real estate. Maybe that's the way to get ahead in my math, minimally 20 times, sorry, 27 times faster. With my math, you can literally get ahead 27 times faster than traditional retirement if you're averaging at least a minimum of a 25% ROI and we're always beating that number. If you're curious about that, there's a link below and you can read up, uh, I'll give you access to my last couple thousand of transactions. Let me show you what I've learned about the game of investing, why we've made it as bulletproof as possible and how it can build a much brighter future for you than just about anything else that you could be doing right now. Put your focus there. If you wanna learn about that, click the link below, get with me and my team, and literally we could be partnering up together. I could be taking you into the most intelligent real estate markets. I could be doing 100% of the work so that it's really passive for you. And together, we do what I do all day long. Win, win, win no matter what. These days I'm a lot less concerned about the next 90 days and I'm always looking into the future and asking what's gonna happen next year, five years from now, 10 years from now. And as I look to 2023, 2024, 2025, I got together with Dolph DeRoos, one of my mentors and business partners and said, hey, let's take a look at the facts. What's really coming up this next year? Click this video, let me show you what we believe is going to happen.